Hey, what's going on, party people? B-Cube here. This is the Impact Lounge. Thank you for listening, as always. And if you're a first-timer, please hit that subscribe button. The next goal is 2,500 subscribers, so I'd really appreciate your assistance in me making that goal a reality. Jesse Goddard, could he be coming back to Impact Wrestling? Do you want to see him come back to Impact Wrestling? I think that's a resounding yes. I can't think of anybody that wouldn't want to see this guy come back. He was really starting to come into his own before Anthem took over the company. And he's just a phenomenal talent. Met him once, and uh, it was a Slammiversary a couple years ago. Probably the coolest, nicest guy I've met, and I've met a lot of Impact stars. He actually took some time to, to chat with me. I let him know I drove seven hours. And I had talked to him on Twitter a little bit in the DMs, so I kind of let him know who I was. And uh, he really took some time to talk to me, and it was a very engaged listener. And would love to see him back. Really talented guy, great look. And um, I, I, I've spoken numerous times on the podcast when he was paired up with Eli Drake. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I loved his his heel run. I loved the spit, the excuse me, the split from the bromance. And I think it was a slam anniversary a few years ago. Um, they, he had a match with Robbie, and I thought he did comedy better than Robbie did. And Robbie tried to be funny. But there was the uh, pose down they were doing before the match, and Robbie E was doing a bunch of dumb shit and. Jesse got her star losing his mind and saying those are not sanctioned poses. And that whole thing I thought was really good. And I just thought he was uh, pretty good as a heel. And I, I thought I thought he easily should have had a mid-card title run at the time. And again, like I said, love them with Eli Drake. I thought that was just such a great pairing. I've spoken numerous times as well on the channel about how I was there at the taping when he showed up with uh, Eli Drake in the match with Grado and then all of a sudden showed up in the bromance 20 minutes later was very confused. It was kind of hoping my eyes were deceiving me because I didn't want the bromance to form again because I really liked what he was doing. But that's when Rude and EY left. And, you know, I'm not a backstage guy, but I feel like it was kind of a, a panic move um, or a quick fix, you could say, to, uh, to help the tag team division out because they had lost two tag teams at the time. And then the Wolves got hurt, so they had nothing. They needed someone to feud with Decay. Now, with that being said, they had the match with Decay at Slammiversary a couple years ago. It was my favorite match on the card. I thought it was excellent, and I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect from it, but it was really good. And they had a couple other matches that I thought were excellent. I thought I, I liked them uh, teamed up, up with Raquel quite a bit, and things didn't work out with her in the company. But, you know, this is a talented guy, and he broke up with the bromance. I don't think there was a rhyme or reason for it creatively. Uh, it's kind of hard to remember, but I don't believe that there was. I think they just kind of split him apart very slowly. And he had the singles matches with um, Decay. Not Decay, the DCC. And I think that was part of the downfall of the DCC is that uh, Jesse Goddard was beating them by himself. And um, I don't know if that was done to you know to break up the DCC or if it was done to elevate Jesse Goddard, but nothing ended up coming of it. Then he had the feud with Aaron Rex, and it was a pretty good one-on-one -on -one feud. But he kept losing. You know, Aaron Rex was doing the power of the punch and everything. And then they had a match, which was a non-title match, and Jesse Goddard beat him. And then nothing nothing happened after that. And he was really starting to come into his own. Anthem took over. We didn't really see him on TV anymore. And then he, you know, departed, parted ways. So he tweets yesterday on Twitter. Um, and he did... he wrote something on Facebook as well. Um, I'll, I'll kind of paraphrase that in, in a little bit, but it was pretty similar to what he said on Twitter. But on Twitter, he said, thank you for your kind words. I greatly appreciate it. I love everyone at Impact Wrestling and consider them family. It was 100% my decision to take some time off earlier this year to work on TV and movie projects, but I will be returning to wrestling soon and hope to be world champion in early 2018. Now on Facebook, wrote something very similar and said, you know, when and where could I wrestle? So, you know, he teased that there could be some um, other opportunities in the works, but I really think Impact is the place to be for him. I think it, um, I think it's his home. I think he's a homegrown guy, and I think he's somebody they could legitimately um, put in the – that he could return and be in the world title scene. I really do. I mean, that, that title scene is a little thin right now, and they don't really have a baby face that can challenge Eli Drake. Outside of you know Johnny Impact, but we're kind of we're kind of over that already. And then you you could you could throw Moose in there, but they just kind of had a mid card title feud not too long ago. So 
I don't know where they're going to go with Eli Drake, but I really think a returning Jesse Goddard in January could really work, and I think he could be a babyface champion, even as a body guy, which is not as over in wrestling these days. But, you know, maybe, maybe you tweak him a, a little bit, um, but I really think he can work. He's good in the ring, has a good look, and he has crossover appeal too. This is something the company has not taken advantage of with him like ever. Maybe a little bit here and there, but not really at all. And that's something they have to start doing a lot better with. And I think Jesse Guy Goddard is the guy to do it. I think he's one of the guys that can take this company to the next level. And he just has to come back. This was, this was a guy I really liked. I think all of you really like him too. I, I can't think of anyone who dislikes him or anybody who didn't want to see him get a big run. Because towards the end with the bromance, I mean, he was outshining Robbie E., like crazy. I mean, he was just looking like the next breakout star in the company. I think he needs to come back. I hope he does. I hope he comes back home and I hope the company does something with him because he really can be in that world title scene. I really truly think that. I know a lot of people say that about, uh, you know, Garza can be world champion and things like I, I don't, I'm not just saying it to say it. Like I truly think he can be. So in the comments, let me know what you guys think. Do you want to see Jesse come back? Do you think he should come back? Do you think this is the place to be? Do you think he could be in the world title scene and legitimately hold the championship as a babyface champion? I say yes. I, I want to know what you guys think. Thanks for listening. Please hit the subscribe button. I'm out.